The global economic collapse is already underway, with consistent evidence mounting that the only positive indicator remaining is equity prices. We have lost the ability to fool ourselves any longer. Watch as countries engage in a race to the bottom. Central banks, who will be the first to go all the way down? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. You can see the real economic indicators if you choose to. That's why you tuned in. So we'll begin with this. Interest rate tightening precedes crisis events. Look at this chart from Real Investment Advice. No matter how you slice it, every time the Federal Reserve increases interest rates, you will have a recession that follows. It is unequivocal. This happens every single time. Invariably, there will be a recession. The challenge, and you will see it here, since the peak in 1980, you will note that they cannot bring interest rates up to the rate they were at previously. So if we estimate that approximately 2006 or so, when interest rates peaked in the last cycle, they were at 5%. This is the Fed funds rate, of course. 5%. But they couldn't go there through the previous one and I don't have the exact figures in front of me, but we can see that the gray shadowed area behind it, I would estimate about six to seven, let's say. So each time around, they will not get to the rate they were at before. Look at the savings and loan, nearly 10%. So we know the trend, where it is. We could follow that all the way down. And of course, not a very accurate line that I'm drawing here, but you get the point. It won't take much. You'll see interest rates climbing and how slow, how much more can they really go without causing a problem. Historically, they have very, very little room. They can't do much. Maybe, at the most, 4%, maybe 3.5%. If history is to be any guide. You have these instances, one after the other after the other, proven on one single chart. So we'll watch. We'll keep our eyes peeled on this. There can be any different number of reasons. That's what I wanted to bring out to you. It's not just a housing crisis. You may suggest, oh, housing is under control. There's no way that same problem is going to happen. You could say, okay, not going to be tech stocks either. They've got that under control. But it doesn't matter because each crisis is a different issue. Maybe it's the same issue. It could be. But potentially a different issue springs up each and every time. Where the weakness is, that's what will be affected first, and then everything all in its trajectory is going to have to fall. So we'll see where it happens. All I'm suggesting to everyone is that we have history to see, yes, this happens every time. The reason why it happens, I don't know. I don't know why. But I can point to this, and I know for a fact what has happened in these instances. Now, a lot of people like to deny this information. And you'll never, ever get this in the mainstream. And the alternative media shies away from this. The alternative media tends to talk about the stock market and its performance on a daily basis, which is something that I generally, I don't get into too much. You know, there's a lot of people in the alternative news. You can tune in and get, you know, tips and things like this. You don't tune into this channel for that information if you haven't figured that out already. Government financial assistance is at record levels and social benefits as a percentage of real disposable income. These two here, very clear. The chart goes back from 1966 and you will note what has happened ever since. 
what we're looking at is Medicare, Social Security, unemployment, Medicaid, and so on. Year after year after year, maybe there are little blips along the way, but ultimately, it just keeps escalating to new heights. And this, all the while, unsustainable simply because there's not anywhere near the amount of growth that the debt and the government, what they owe, what they promised, is currently at and where it goes. A lot of people suggest that as long as the debt is manageable, then it's not an issue. I would suggest to everybody that it is absolutely not manageable. This is a very, very simple fact you can see for yourself, right? They make the point here. They're at the highest level on record. Highest level on record. But let's not focus on that. Real margin debt as a percentage of real GDP going far beyond the financial crisis, going far beyond the tech bubble, and everything before it. Okay? I love to draw these charts. It's the same thing every time. Going beyond anything we've ever seen before. And when you factor in inflation, real levels of inflation, the stock market hasn't really done that well. It's performing. Definitely better than cash is, for example. Definitely better than you know, certain asset classes, there's no doubt. But factoring real levels of inflation, you start to get a different picture about it. But one thing that has performed better is the amount of debt. Debt is incredible. The bankers are making so much money. There's so much margin out there. There's so much debt out there that these companies are making a fortune gap between real disposable income and the cost of living. I thought this was interesting. The reason why growth remains stuck at 2%. All right. Consumer credit per capita is this line here. Okay. Increasing heavily over the years. And, and just stay tuned for that. Let me get into that more in a moment. The gap between the real DPI and the cost of living. You'll note that as the years go on, people are simply more indebted. Things become more expensive. I just did a video about this, and I'm so thankful to all the people out there who shared their personal experience, where they're from exactly, and I was reading through all of them and noticing 95% of people were telling me about their grocery bills and their expenses. And they were all within the same idea that basically I was doing in my video. There was 5% that were suggesting otherwise, but literally 95% of the people were suggesting, okay, last year groceries were cheaper, 10 years ago they were cheaper. Clearly there is food inflation. It is not the 2% that the government is telling me. That is a fact. We have people literally all over the US and other parts of the world, 95% are telling me that they are not experiencing the 2% per year, or actually it was 1.6% level of inflation that they experience in food. It is much, much higher. We have proof of that. And once again, thank you all for participating in that. Total system leverage, government, corporate, household, margin, banks. All right, take a guess. Take a guess. Total system leverage required per $1 of GDP. It takes more and more and more to try to get that GDP up. You can't successfully keep this up doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. But they try. Of course, they, they try. So it's a failure because government is a failure. If their mandate is actually what they're trying to do. But 
it's sad to me when you see people that are so... I want to be as polite as possible. How to, I'll just say it. They're suckers. They believe everything they're told. It's just, it's strange. It's really strange. After all these years, even if you've only been paying attention for, let's say, 10 years, you get enough information just from the mainstream media to decide, okay, I think these guys are a bunch of liars. All right. Now, I told you about people's expenses, consumer loans, credit cards, right? This is specifically in the United States, 13-week annualized percentage change. The amount of money that people spend on their credit cards is unbelievable. Now, if you spent money on your credit card and paid it off before the month was over, I would suggest, you know what, nothing wrong with that. If you want to do that, nothing wrong with that. But there is a very, very large percentage of people that carry a balance. When you carry a balance, you are simply feeding the system. You're paying extremely high rates of these interests that it's literally, it's a ripoff. They're ripping you off blind. Look at where it's gone over the years consistently. This is since the, basically after the financial crisis is 2011. People are over that whole, you know, the economy is doing bad. They're, they're not into that. They don't believe that. Um, except for, you know, some people who are truly feeling it. If they still have some money on their credit card, then they will spend it. Don't worry. Have no fear. I always get, I don't know about you, but where, where you live, I'm consistently being offered more and more credit on my credit card. I don't want it. In fact, they got me good because they increased my credit limit without telling me. I don't know how they got away with that, but they increased it. I think it was to maybe $7,000. I didn't approve that. And they consistently send me uh, letters. They, on online banking, they're constantly, you know, free. Don't worry. We'll just increase your credit limit. Just click this button, you know, say, okay. I don't want it. I don't want more credit. I pay that off every single time I buy something with it. I just pay it off. I don't want to carry a balance ever, ever, ever. Personal savings rate. Does that surprise anybody? Come on. What a joke. Heading down to levels that have not been seen. Guess what? Guess what? Can anybody guess? That's right. Pre-financial crisis. We are now at those same levels that we were at when everybody was saying, oops, made a mistake. You know, you know what happened. More than half of Americans will retire broke. I would suggest that many people will not be able to retire as a result. I don't have retirement savings, 34%. Dollar amount represents a total amount saved for retirement. Percentages have been rounded to the nearest whole number. This, of course, it's a poll. It's a small amount of people compared to the total. This is not everybody, right? But I would say this is probably a fairly accurate thing. When people have less, think about the amount of people that have less than $10,000. Half of people. It's, it's really, to me, it's shocking. Very quickly, I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but it's called the Big Mac Index developed by The Economist. And it's a lighthearted guide to whether currencies are at their correct level. It is based on the theory of purchasing power parity, the notion that in the long run, exchange rates should move towards the rate that would equalize the prices of an identical basket of goods and services, in this case a burger, in any two countries. Okay, so you can see it for yourself. All you got to do is go to a search engine and type in the Big Mac Index Economist, and you will see this for yourself. I found it very interesting, wanted to bring it to you, but it's just unrelated so i'll move on last but not least the us cftc all right so a bunch of people were rigging the precious metals market 
confirmed. So it's funny because a lot of people will say it's rigged. We know that. And then other people will laugh. Other people will call them, you know, names, this and that. They're ridiculed. It's it's proven. It was literally a fact proven. And we're still going back and pretending that it was just something that people made up. This is it. This is right from the CFTC themselves. They got these little slap on the wrist. It's a joke. Truly a joke to see it. I just wanted to let you know. Throw that in at the end. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. And remember that if you found this video informative, you'll definitely find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. There's also the audiobook version of Global Economic Collapse. I know many people were suggesting that they don't want to read, they don't have time to read, so they would like to put something, maybe play it on their headphones or maybe in their car while they're driving or something else. So you can do that with Global Economic Collapse. That's available at my website, themoneygps.com. If you want to flip through the books, you can do so at Amazon. Links are in the description below. Take care.